Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my weekly recap of stuff that I've been watching and playing and all of that fun stuff. So this week is going to be a little bit of a summarized review just because I didn't have a chance to watch Vikings this week, but I did watch another pirate set of pirate related movies just because I was in the mood to watch them. So um, this week's media section was going to be rounding out, uh, rounded out with that. So as far as starting off this episode, the explanation of the cover image is that it was again created in Google Gemini with the prompt of a zombie samurai in space listening to the radio. So let's go through the stuff I watched to fill that out. So I did um, watch The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, season one, or technically not really a season, but episode two game. Um, the episode that is all about Michonne and her point of view of how she reunited with Rick and then what happened in the aftermath of that once she was caught up or once we were caught up with the events of how they met in episode one. So overall a good episode and not too much more to say aside from what I mentioned in my hot take earlier this week. Um, But like I said overall a good episode. I like that now she's working from the inside I do get the split feeling that Rick means what he says, that he's working from the inside, but he's not with the CRM. But I do get the feeling that he's up to something, and I'm not sure if it's related to him giving up on escaping, or if he's finally given in and decided that he's gonna make the change within the CRM and like do something like take it over or something like that. So um overall good stuff there i did like the scene where or as soon as they caught up um michonne and rick caught up first thing he says is how or he asks about judith so i like that and i did want the um little person to stick around a little bit more i liked his character a lot i was kind of hoping that he either escaped or joined up as well and we get to see more of him and doing stuff for the crm from the inside to help out to help the CRM, but in reality help Rick and Michonne to escape. Um, So with that being said, I also had a chance to watch Shogun Episode 3, Tomorrow is Tomorrow. So we're dealing with the aftermath of the first couple of episodes, and they're now transporting um, Blackburn, or whoever that guy is, um, away from their, um, their little feudal state that they're in, and um well, there's a lot of plans within plans so i'm actually really intrigued to see what they're um doing with that and what the purpose of everyone's thing is but it sounds like they're, everyone is vying for power and it's a matter of who gets the upper hand so i see the show getting compared a lot to game of thrones so it does kind of feel like that a lot so once you if you keep with the progression of who's sided with who and every there are multiple places where people are side with other people then the show is also that much more enjoyable and intriguing. I also had a chance to watch Star Wars The Bad Batch um, Season 3 Episode 5 The Return. So this episode was all about um, Crosshair coming back to join Clone Clone Force 99, their issue or his issue with Hunter, their difference of opinions as far as Omega goes and all of that. So and then also decrypting the data pad that Nala Say gave to Omega. So all in all a good episode and now that crosshair is back with clone force 99 i'm curious to see where they go from here but um it was kind of just rounding out the past couple of episodes to have them team up again so now we can kind of move forward from here and then finally to round it all out um the set of movies that i wanted to watch um were the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I was originally just going to watch the first one just because I had an inkling to watch that, but then I got to thinking that, let me see how the trilogy of films makes it the first three films hold up as a complete trilogy. And overall it does, because once you are finished with the Black Pearl, Davy Jones Locker, the um, the Flying Dutchman, and all of that stuff, and then you have, you know, Will Turner as captain of the Flying Dutchman, and then Sparrow uh, without that price on his head. 
and all the things with the brother in court and all of that he, basically the story is complete it's kind of like um kind of like along the lines of the rounding out you know like the original star wars trilogy the heroes um they're out from under the grip of the empire and all of that stuff so we can now move on to other stories and other events and filling out other background details of everything that's going on so if nothing else definitely watch the first three films and then after the first one i kind of remember that they had something with the dog but i couldn't quite place it and so in re-watching the films the dog does stick through the um trilogy of films so i kind of liked all of that so Overall, a good set of films. I like the whole set, uh, franchise in general, but if anything else, um, or if you want to limit yourself to just a single overarching story, definitely watch the first three movies. So with that being said, as far as this week's Android segment goes, it's going to be the, an app review about podcast clients. So there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of um, different ones that people like, dislike, and all of that. But the one that I've been using for many, many years now is Pocket Casts. So even with a, a UI update like a few years ago and people not liking it and all of that, for me personally, I have generally liked it because it's a generally clean UI. It's not terrible, but um, I don't want to say it's like, you know, the perfect UI. I do like it in general. Um, the only thing I don't like is the playlist like or the cue screen, which I kind of wish was a little bit simpler. Of all the pocket or of all the podcast client apps I've used, the Antenna Pod Q is actually one of the better ones. Um, but that being said, one of, two of the features that Pocket Cast strives in or excels at is the trim silence feature and the um, volume normalization feature that other apps either don't do as well or can't quite replicate. So I definitely recommend Pocket Cast for those two reasons that. It does the best job that I've seen to do that. Aside from that, it also provides the most stable um, application of feeds from different sources. So whether you're adding just an RSS feed, something from their directory, a Patreon feed, it's probably the best one that works. Um, AntennaPod does a good job, but every so often it does error out and give a problem. Other apps are inconsistent, some support it, some don't. So with all that being said, if you want a podcast um, client that just works use Pocket Cast, and of course I'm not recommending um, Google Podcasts in this because they are closed shutting that down in favor of YouTube Podcasts which I do use and I haven't really used it as on the podcasting side but if you use YouTube music then it's kind of from what I could tell it's along the lines of that I have been meaning to try it out but it's one of those things that Pocket Cast for me just works. It's stable, you know, with Google Podcasts and YouTube, and YouTube Music, YouTube Podcasts. It's one of those things that generally just doesn't really um, stay consistent. Like you don't really have a backing of what's going on or like if it's going to last or if they're going to shut it down or anything like that. So um, that's why I just I keep going back to Pocket Cast. I, I try other apps and think I'm going to move away from it, but it's hard to do it because it is a good all-encompassing app. So um, if you're looking to get into Pocket Cast or want a good client that generally works, definitely give it a shot. Um, and then the final thing about it is that it is a, a cross-platform client. So it does have a web um, site that you can go to if you um, pay for it. Um, you can buy it on Android and iOS, sign in with the same account, and it sy syncs to your account so you can move from one device to another. So if you have, you know, for example, an Android smartphone and an iPad and then a desktop computer, if you sign into the same account on all three devices, all your podcasts are sync synced across devices so you can move from one to another to another and everything is there. You don't have to worry about you know, um, finding all the RSS feeds, resubscribing, marking the ones you want, you listen to, not listen to, remembering progress. Nothing like that actually has to be done. It's all synced, so um, it's easy to use, and um, you uh, you have you know you don't have to worry about it. It's that just that easy. So to round out this particular episode, as far as the Knights of the Old Republic gameplay update goes, um, I'm now done with Dantooine and Kashyyyk, so now it's time for Manon. Um, and one of the reasons I did Kashyyyk, which, which I um, remembered after I 
um, resume playing the game after last week's episode is that on Manan, um, if you have Jolie Bindo in your party, then you can initiate the quest with his friend who's on trial. So if you go to Manan first, then you can't trigger him right off the bat. And I forget if, um, if you go to Manan first, and then Kashik, if you're able to go back and trigger that trial. So if you want the um, XP and and all of that stuff, then go to Kashik first. Um, and Kashik is also kind of like a stepping stone. There's not too much going on. You do have to, you know, reunite um, Zalbar with his brother or his father, depending on if you want to do light side or dark side. So if you go light side, then you save his father. If you go dark side, you reunite him with his brother. And keep the slavers via Zerka there. So um, you have that option. Um, and then you pick up Jolie Bindo in your party who's in the Shadowlands. Um, and there's a small quest here and there, but there's not a whole lot going on on the planet. So the big thing is either you can save the Wookiees from slavery or you can keep them in slavery and gain dark side points, things like that. But that's about it. And then um, of course, I've paid my visit to Yavin Station, so I have the usual um, review of stuff going on there with equipment and story and all of that. So not really much to say there. I mean, it's the usual progression of equipment and armor and stuff like that. So it doesn't really, there's really not much to say or notice until the end. But if you do need armor upgrades, then definitely visit the um, Rodian at Yavin Station, but I mean, even if you don't buy anything, definitely keep visiting it until the end to get the two major um, lightsaber crystals. So that's all there is for this particular episode and set of reviews. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, um, you can comment on the post on social media, which are all linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Gameplay videos are all up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash n one And of course, you can get early access to the podcast, an ad-free version of it, and all of that good stuff. Um, early access and a copy of the cover image up on the Patreon at patreon.com slash n one But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.